So for this assignment, for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to use the same uh, simplified version of Hugh's um, plans uh, that we uploaded to Google Drive. Uh, my dimensions are like they were for the one point perspective uh, tutorial and, and assignment. Um, and I'm going to use it again for this. Again, here's the same diagram I used in the one point perspective uh, tutorial. Um, we're going to make this the two point perspective. You can see the station point was inside. Um, we're actually going to move that station point somewhere out here. And we're going to use the corner of this building as a center of view. So we see this in perspective there, and we'll have vanishing points to the left and the right, two vanishing points. The horizon line will still be in the perspective drawing, but we're also going to talk about the picture plane, which essentially becomes the horizon line. Ground line again, center of vision. Horizontal measuring line, vertical measuring line, those are still important. We do not have a diagonal point, uh, which we used in the one point perspective. Um, because everything is at a diagonal here, we don't have any um, lines that are parallel to the horizon line. We're going to use another system, which I'll show you um, in this in the diagram coming up, uh, where we use what we call measuring points. Okay, and the station point still exists. Uh, the page numbers, 272 and 273, you can find those there. The first thing you want to do is create a plan diagram. It sort of sets the angle at which you want to view, kind of understanding where the center of vision will be relative to that. Um, and your vanishing points. Now, what I did is what I saw in the, the Ching book design drawing um, is I left this at uh, 30, 60, 30 to the right, 60 to the left, and my vanishing points were set up with the same angle. So this is the 30, 60 as well, with the center of vision being on this uh, back left corner. And then uh, you can see the relative uh, distances are based on those angles. These are parallel lines, these are parallel lines. And I just made this distance 10 uh, away from the picture plane, which we can see here. Okay, so first thing I want to do is draw this picture plane, which will become the horizon line. All these points will be measured on the horizon line in the same way that they're measured on this picture plane. Uh, number two, we set the point at which uh, we want the vertical measuring line to exist on that picture plane. Um, we're doing this right now at 1 to 100. Uh, we'll translate it to the perspective at 1 to 50. Okay. Uh, the third thing I want to do is set my station point, which I just backed up again, 10 meters. Uh, number four, then obviously, um, are the uh, <coughs> vanishing point left and the vanishing point right, which again, I've adjusted 30 and 60, 60 in this direction, 30 in that direction. Uh, again, parallel to those lines that we find in the building. Uh, and then number five, <clears throat> I established these uh, measuring points to the left and the right. Now, if you have a small enough drawing and a big enough compass, you can do this at home with the compass. Um, I did not have a compass uh, available to me since I didn't really know we were going to need one. Um, so I set up my own kind of makeshift compass. Uh, I just used a, a kind of kebab stick and a piece of twine, obviously. You wind this up, get some tension on it, okay, and then you can just uh, draw your lines like that. Now these measuring points to the left and the right are based on the arc, right, that you create uh, with this radius away from each of these vanishing points to the left and the right. It works the same way, okay, and depending on the angle of your vanishing points and the depth of that station point, uh, those will change, but they'll always be relatively the same. Now, um, this is just an approximation for measurement, just like 
Uh, the diagonal line approximated dist uh, the uh, sort of way distance diminished as you go towards the horizon. It's not a, a sort of mathematical, um, precise, accurate, like you would see in life kind of thing. It's really just an approximation, a simulation of what it might look like uh, for the purposes of a, of a perspective drawing. So these points can all change slightly and you'll still have the feeling that it's working as a perspective, but things might be more or less distorted and I encourage you to, to try them out. So the next thing we wanna do after we've established all these points is to then translate this into a perspective drawing uh, grid. Okay. All right, so I've sort of laid one out. You can see this. Uh, I call this part one. It's on page 272. It's beneath the plan diagram that you see. Um, and we'll walk through basically how to set this up and what these things uh, mean. It's a lot like the one point perspective, um, except in the case that you've got the two vanishing um, points to the left and the right. And we have to try to translate from the ground line those left and right measurements um, to those vanishing lines to the left and the right. You can see I've, I've got to find a way to translate these measurements to that line. You can see they're not the same, and, and, but they correlate. We use the measuring points to the left and the right to do that, which is kind of more like the diagonal lines, but they don't work quite the same way. So obviously the first thing that I'm going to do is draw that horizon line, which is also the picture plane. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish uh, my measuring line, my vertical measuring line at 1 to 50. Okay. Scale doesn't necessarily matter. The bigger you make the scale, obviously, the closer you are to the building, but that does change the station point. We could probably leave most of these other things the same, and you could see how this, this might, might change. You should probably experiment with that. Uh, you can see I've got my nine meters height, all right? And I have my six meters to the left for that face, and my 15 meters to the right uh, for that side face, okay? So this will be the front face of the building and this will be the side face of the building when we get into the perspective. And you can see how that works left and right down here with my ground line, which is the third thing that I draw in. And I just make sure I translate those measurements directly from one to 50 scale. The one thing I've done differently, if you notice from uh, the one point perspective tutorial is I've sort of shifted the building down um, uh, against the horizon so that I'm not at two meters. Two meters we know is eye level. That's why I did that in the one perspective uh, tutorial. But you remember that we got a little confused by looking at, we couldn't see that second floor and the stairs kind of dived into it and we found ourselves with some, uh, some complicated problems when we did that at two meters just because the way the plan was drawn or the way I simplified it. So what I've done is I've shifted it down. So our eye line of sight is actually gonna be at three meters and we can just imagine we're standing on a hill or maybe on a table. Uh, somehow we're a little bit higher than we normally would be. Maybe we're a really tall person, I don't know. But we're gonna be looking at it at three meters uh, instead of two. And that's gonna be important because there are gonna be some elements over here um, and you know that shift in the ground plane and I wanna look down on top of it I want to pull it down so I'm looking on top of it, uh, not looking directly into it at the line of the horizon, which can be a little bit confusing. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want to establish um, from this point right, where my left and right vanishing points are. Okay. And then I'm going to scale up from the 1 to 100 plan diagram that I had drawn to 1 to 50. All these measurements stay the same. So the dif distance between the vanishing point right and the measuring point right, right, it's still the same. It's just twice 
as far here because I've scaled up from 1 to 50, from 1 to 100. Same is true on the left. Okay, so that distance is two and a half. It's the same uh, in the one to 100 plan diagram. Okay. And then I want to establish from those measuring points, I can just do that directly by drawing to those extents, as you see. Right? And what those intersections then give me are where my verticals will be at the end of the day. You see that happening? Okay. And then from those vanishing points, simply, or those measuring points, I simply want to draw them through each of these measurements here. Okay? So we can start with one. And when I do that, Right, we can do go to two and you can see these lines are not in perspective. They're actually at a sort of a strange or funny angle. All right, they're gonna look maybe a little strange or funny. You're gonna remove them when we get to the actual perspective drawing, but for the purposes of this uh, grid measure, this measuring grid, we've gotta be able to transfer these scaled measurements to this sort of vanishing line for the side of our building. And those intersections now become a way to do that. Okay, so you can see how that works. Right, so as I draw those lines through, they correspond to this line and wherever they meet or intersect, okay, that's where we actually translate those measurements to. And so we're one to one in terms of what that means, okay? So that's how that works. It's not that complicated, although I'm sure it was hard to figure out the first time. Okay. And then the next thing we wanna do, sort of make that matrix or that grid box, all right? And I'm just gonna use that measuring point on the left and the right to get those measuring lines into my my ground plane, and then I'm just gonna draw my verticals up using my T-square, okay? If you notice on the right here, I actually, when I got back in this area, this was so confusing with the heaviness of my pen that I only have 14 and not 15 meters in there, but you're gonna make sure that's accurate. And for the purpose of the tutorial, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I did get the left side correct, okay? And so really all I needed to do was get this left and right face. Now, if you're going to be looking inside of this or you're cutting a section, you'll also want to translate this grid uh, to the ceiling plane and you'd want to do these inside walls. Uh, but you can kind of see the volume inside goes to back there a little bit. Um, I did also, uh, we'll talk about this, I extended out some points in this direction uh, from my you can see from my measuring point right, I extended out some points because I know I'm gonna have an element out here, I'm gonna have a stair, and I'm gonna draw that in perspective. And so sometimes it's good not just to stay inside of the building necessarily, but you know, you've got landscape or site, and so you may want to extend this grid out so that you can actually measure things that are exterior to the building. 